I'm Kira Morgan. Thanks for joining me on this episode of Coffee with Kira, sponsored by The Human Being in Newport and Lincoln City. And I'm excited to be here at Phoenix Wellness Center with Nicole Raritan, who is in charge of this year's Hands Across the Bridge celebration. We're so excited about that upcoming event. First of all, let's get to know Nicole. Nicole, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. I'm Nicole Raritan. I work at Phoenix Wellness Center. Um, I'm currently a peer mentor, uh, which means I just kind of go out into the community and do a bunch of outreach to individuals, help bring them to the table and plant the seed and get them started in their life and recovery. And let's talk a little bit about Phoenix Wellness Center and what you guys do all together. Absolutely. So Phoenix Wellness Center does a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but our, our core is, is we are a drug and alcohol outpatient treatment center. We specialize in a lot of different things. We have a ton of different groups, living skills groups, self groups, recovery maintenance group, which uh, like today we did hikes. Um, we do a ton of outreach within our community. We provide support, help in getting people into housing. We help people get their licenses. We help people with insurance, med medical care. Pretty much anything you might think you need, we can figure out how to help. And if we don't have the resource to do it, we'll develop it. And I want to emphasize that Phoenix Wellness Center, though located in Newport, serves the entire county, correct? Correct. So let's talk about some of the ways that you help folks. Um, do you mean folks individually? Yes. Yeah, so some of the ways we help people, uh, I do a lot of outreach with um, all local law enforcement throughout our counties, Lincoln City, Newport, Toledo. Uh, we work out in Solettes. We work through the Sheriff's Department, through Oregon State Police. Pretty much any resource out there that needs assistance, they'll call and ask for a peer to come and speak with an individual in need or an individual that might be struggling that that officer might not be able to provide the resource but doesn't want to leave the individual sitting alone. Uh, sometimes that type of outreach looks like just sitting on the ground next to them and talking about where their life has been and, and where they want it to start heading. Sometimes it's about providing a resource to get them a tent and sleeping bags and supplies to be houseless. Uh, sometimes it's about providing medical care and helping them get set up with a provider or their insurance on or their food stamps on or a cell phone. Um, Pretty much a broad spectrum of things as far as our outreach goes it's it's all kind of all over the place a lot at the hospitals um, i go to the er a lot to crisis calls depending on you know somebody might have overdosed or could be suicidal or has a little bit of mental health stuff going on we'll go and provide whatever type of support we can and if we don't have the support um, we can call in other people within our um, community community partners we work a lot with like I said, local law enforcement, um, but there is the leads program and things like that. We're able to use and, and access as additional resources to really help that individual get up off the ground and start to grow their own life back. Now the leads program, you mentioned that. Can you tell us what that is? I don't know a lot about the leads program, but I know it's through the local law enforcement. It's a program that's developed to be able to provide resources to people. Uh, for example, a call I just went on with Newport Police Department um, they activated with the leads program, um, a leads program provider showed up and was able to help that individual uh, get secure with housing, get secure with maybe sometimes they need help with getting their electricity back on or things of that nature that they're struggling with that might be holding them back from being able to make the next step forward and in, in gaining recovery. And let's talk about um, a great event that's coming up the Hands Across the Bridge event. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. What are you doing? So this year, the Hands Across the Bridge, um, it's held in Walport every year now. It's, I believe it starts at 1130. Um, it's an amazing event, you guys. Like if, if anybody has never been to it, whether you're struggling with addiction, in addiction, had experience with addiction, or or have had nothing to do with it. It is an event that we as a community really want to develop uh, it getting back to the root of being a community event where the community members can come and just be with each other and provide support to one another through all aspects of trauma. 
uh, it doesn't have to be just because it's it's about addiction based. It's it's going to be something that this year that we are providing an open forum for everybody to come and join and speak and talk about things they might be struggling with, things that that they're having a hard time getting through or processing. Uh, Hands Across the Bridge originally was started to provide a space uh, for the addict that still suffers, the addicts that we've lost, and the addicts that haven't came to the table yet, and the addicts that are in recovery. Um, that event has been developed over the years to provide that type of a network for people to gather and talk about their struggles, their experiences, their strengths, their hopes. This year, I'm looking for a, a lot of, at, um, I guess, more excitement to bring to the table. People that are there to talk about the things that they're they're doing today in life. Maybe maybe a little bit of their experience, but more so about how their life has progressed and the things that they've gained in life today. Because I think what we fail to, to realize as a community, the stigma around an addict is they're still where they're at, even if they're in recovery. And sometimes we don't get to see that growth. Uh, like I said earlier, I go to the hospitals a lot and meet people in crisis situations. Um, and I've been trying really hard to, to re-let the hospital know like, hey, this person made it to detox. This person is progressing in life. This person is gaining these tools in recovery because those tools that they gained in recovery without me advocating and saying, hey, this, this person's actually doing life and actually living life, they don't know that. So to be able to provide that information to our community and to be able to have an event like Hands Across the Bridge where we can all gather and just love and support one another, no matter what that looks like, is such a blessing and so close to my heart. I'm super grateful to be able to be a huge part of it. What I love about Hands Across the Bridge, and I've been attending uh, for the most part of what, over 10 years probably, um, and what I love is the fact that families are coming together and celebrating their family members who've made it through a very difficult time and are moving forward. Absolutely. Um, and so with that being said, like it's open to kids of all ages. It's open to anybody that would love to attend. And like I said, this is an event that you might not have have an addiction past or be an addict yourself, but I'm going to encourage everyone that hears this to please attend. It's such a powerful and moving and amazing event to see all of these people that have came from such deep, dark struggles to prosper in life and to see people that have had their kids taken away because of their addiction and now have their kids and are able to attend things like this. And it's, it's such a heartwarming event to see people hold hands and walk across the bridge. And, you know, the best moment for me at Hands Across the Bridge is when all the drumming stops and all the people stop and we take a moment to remember all the people that we've lost and all the people that are coming to the table because that is that is the most powerful aspect of this is we, we don't realize how many people we're losing to addiction today. And giving that moment of silence to provide that space for those people that are there and the people that are watching or listening to just take a moment to reflect on the things that they maybe have lost but more importantly, the things that they have gained. And let's take a moment to talk a little bit about addiction. It looks a little bit different now. Um, what are some things that you're seeing? So within this community, there's a lot of fentanyl. Um, it used to be meth was the thing or cocaine was the thing. Today, fentanyl is the thing. Is it a powder? Is it it's what, pill is form, it it's powder form. It? Okay. It's, it's pill form. I know nothing form. about it. I've never seen it. I, I I know the name. That's all I know. It's It comes in a pill form. It comes in powder form. It it literally comes in, they'll make it look like a stick of sidewalk chalk. Um, super scary. Like they make the pill, the pill form originally, they call them blues. Now they make them in every color. Uh, the blues, the actual blues, look identical to a 30 milligram morphine pill, pharmaceutical groups, <sighs> like twins. The only difference is, is if you took a pharmaceutical grade and a street mate and you tried to smash it, the pharmaceutical grade is dense to where the, the street mate is, is not. It's because it's not chemically mixed up, right? All, um, so like you might do a part of it, 
and all of that that the fentanyl is in one piece of it it's literally equivalent to if you can imagine two little pieces of table salt that's how much it takes to overdose um unfortunately today it's it's really targeted towards catching a child's eye um, why what i i it, it it kills people so what is the point i mean okay coke meth those are addicting they're to keep you coming back for more if your client is dead there is no coming back for more right so fentanyl is is laced in everything today we we see it all across the board with individuals that we work with uh, individuals that we speak with uh, we have a lot of people that will say I well I've just been doing meth um, and throughout our conversations we'll discover that there's actually fentanyl in your UA um, and they have no idea right and and then we'll get into being able to discuss with them like well what's been different about your use or how is your use affecting you today or you know, different aspects of how their addiction has progressed. And in conversating, you will gain the knowledge of like, okay, well, I realize I'm sleeping more. I realize I don't have as much energy. I realize I need more quicker. I realize, you know, different aspects to where people that were using meth 10 or 15 years ago, just were just using meth. And unfortunately today, fentanyl is mixed in all sorts of things. Uh, I do a lot of outreach with kids. A lot of, like I said, a lot of outreach within our community. And the scariest thing to me is that it's targeted to kids. Um, it's, it's real, it's, I guess for a better way of explaining it, it's a, it's a lot like how nicotine companies or vaping companies make things targeted to kids. They make the vapes taste like Fruit Loops, right? Or donuts or whatever. And I they make the like, containers packaging. look real pretty. Absolutely, like candy. Right, um, so it's, it's attractive to a child's eye. So the part that's scary about that is, is so your kid takes a vape to school and shares it with somebody else and they put something in it or the, the kid that has it doesn't know that there's something in it. Um, it's in all kinds of vapes, it's in all kinds of things. It's super, super scary the way that it's filtrating through our communities. There's also a drug called xylazine, mm. which is actually a horse tranquilizer um, that they're mixing in with fentanyl. We we are able here at Phoenix to test for xylazine now within our UA company, which is really amazing, but a little bit scary. We've had a few UA show that there's xylazine in it. So I know it's in our community. Um, I talk with local law enforcement a lot about kind of what, what it looks like throughout our community as far as like what type of drugs are throughout, this, throughout our community or how it's affecting our community, of course. Um, and to hear the scenes that they're writing to is super scary um, it's taking three to four narcan or more to revive somebody from an overdose and if you can i guess visualize two grains of salt in your hand that's about how much fentanyl it takes to overdose two grains of salt two grains of i want to emphasize that two grains of table salt let's say table salt grains though. not not uh not Grains, individual grains. Right, table salt. Now, Narcan, let's talk about the importance of that and, uh, and should everybody should have Narcan. Absolutely. Um, I carry it in my truck. I carry it in my backpack when I go kayaking. We have it in all of our vehicles at Phoenix. We have done a ton of Narcan events. If anybody is interested in learning or gaining more knowledge at the end of this, I will give all of my information so you can for sure reach out to me. Narcan is a drug that was developed to reverse the effects of an opioid. So, and it's a very effective tool. It's extremely effective. The most amazing thing to me about Narcan is that it will only reverse the effects of an opioid. So if you don't mind, I'm gonna use you as an example. Let's say you're a diabetic and this morning you didn't take your insulin. I don't know that. So we're at work together today and you fall out and you're unconscious. I don't know you're a diabetic. I don't know why you fell out. Immediately, I know that I can use Narcan to see if it revives you. Narcan has zero effect on your body medically if opioids are not on board. The only thing that Narcan will do is reverse the effect of an opioid. So if you're laying here unconscious at work with me today and I don't know why you're unconscious, 
I'm like, I'm gonna do what I can before the paramedics get here. So we have, we like to use the nasal spray of Narcan. It comes in four milligram doses. Um, and so it's easy. You just put it up. It's just two, like two it's, squirts. It's like if anybody knows what Flonase like, is, it's, yes, it's just <laughs> like Flonase, yes. exact same procedure. Um, and it takes a, a few minutes for somebody to come out of an overdose because what it does, if you can think of medically when you're having surgery and you go to sleep and then all of a sudden you wake up and you're in recovery, you have no recollection of that surgery, how long it took. It's the same as in an overdose state, your body forgets it. Mm. So when you wake up, you're not sure what happened. You're not sure what's going on, but what you do know is your body is in acute withdrawal. So as an addict, if you were to hit me with Narcan, or like I said, you were unconscious and I hit you with that Narcan and, and you actually were overdosed, you're gonna get, you're gonna wake up in acute withdrawal. You're gonna wake up sick, maybe angry, maybe frustrated, because I just took your high away. So it reverses the effect of all of that fentanyl or opioid being on your cell receptors. So if you can imagine it like the COVID ball, everybody knows what the COVID ball <laughs> looks like. I hate to use that as a reference, but it's actually a really good reference. So the COVID ball, and it's got all these little spikes off of it, right? So imagine that cell in your brain and it's got all these little receptors off of it. Well, the fentanyl clings to it. The opioid clings to those receptors. When Narcan is injected, it blows it, it off those like receptors. Oh, okay. So it's just floating in, in free space, so to speak, for a while, right? And in, in about 30 minutes to an hour, depending on how much you have on board, that'll reattach. So that's why but a lot of people- it gives time to get medical help. Yes. And if you, in the example that you gave, if I were in a diabetic coma, the Narcan would have no effect. No effect at all. It wouldn't, it wouldn't harm me. me. From at recovery all. from whatever it was, non narcotic all. related. All it would so. do is be able to, for me to tell the paramedics while I'm on the phone with them, I've just administered Narcan, I have no result. So they have the knowledge. Absolutely. And they'll be able to coach you. You know, the most important thing to do in a situation like that is to call 911 immediately, put your phone on speakerphone, give them Narcan, and let the, the dispatch tell you what steps to take next. And it's so easy. It does, it's exactly as Nicole just explained it. I've been through the trainings. I have Narcan in my, in my, uh, in my Jeep uh, because oh. I'm at a lot of community events and you just never know. You know, and a lot of people have the stigma around it being a drug addict, but what I really would like for our community to remember is, is our grandmas, our grandpas, our moms, our dads are prescribed pain medication when they have surgeries. Um, I've worked in the medical field for a long time, so I've definitely seen this happen, but you know, your, your grandma say takes her pain medication and she falls asleep and in her pain of, of sleeping, she doesn't remember that she just took her pain medicine 15 minutes ago because she feels like she's been asleep for a long period of time. So she wakes up and she takes another one because it hurts could center in an overdose state. So most medical providers, when they prescribe an opioid, they will also prescribe Narcan. And it can be, uh, how can folks get Narcan? Um, is it only through the classes that you hold? No, um, anyone can obtain Narcan. Your medical provider can actually write you a prescription for it. You can go to the pharmacy and request it. I know Newport Library has it on hand. No questions asked with any of these foundations. Um, Lincoln County Mental Health has it. Uh, we have it here. You're more than welcome to come into Phoenix Wellness Center and I would be more than grateful to teach you how to use it because it really could save somebody's life. And you here at Phoenix offer uh, Narcon classes on a pretty regular basis. Yes, we do a class about every 90 days. We'll have another one coming up in about another month and a half. Wonderful. And of course, we'll keep folks informed of, you know, when you're, yeah. when you're doing that. Um, all right, so recap, Towns Across the Bridge, date, time, date. location. Date, time, uh, can you see? Date, time is September 16th, 2023. It's gonna be at the, the bridge crossing. We'll start at 11.30. I'm gonna encourage everybody, please be there by like 11. Um, what about parking? And this is at the Interpretive Center? Yes, ma'am. So that's why I encourage people to get there a little bit early. Parking in Walport's kind of terrible. Um, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> um, there is the field on the back side of the Dollar General, if people are familiar with that area. Mm -hmm. That's a great space to park at. And it's really convenient because as soon as we're done with the walk across the bridge, we're going to re 
gather at the community center, which is kind of across from the Dollar General. Um, it's going to be a great event, guys. Like, it's going to start at 1130. Like I said, I would recommend getting there at 11. It's a lot of fun just to socialize and, and talk with people. That's that are, my favorite part. Yeah, <laughs> people that are just doing what you're doing. Or, and last or, year you had drummers. Yeah, we'll have drummers um, that walk us across the bridge. They'll start the ceremony with, with drumming, and they'll drum us all the way across the bridge. Uh, it's just it's just a great event. Um, there'll also be food. So I know some people come. If there's food, there's food. So good reason to come. Um, there's going to be some speakers talking about kind of what their life is like today and, and the progresses that they've made or maybe the, the struggles that they've had. Uh, and also with that being said, if anybody is listening and feels compelled to speak at this event, please do not hesitate to come find me. I will have a very similar bandana on, guaranteed. Not hard to find um, or find Kira as well, but please don't hesitate to, even if you just want to share a little bit of your story, 30 seconds, 10 minutes, whatever you got, uh, we would love to have you speak. Um, like I said, we just really want to bring that whole aspect of what it looks like as a community focus. Fantastic. And how can folks get a hold of you if they want some more information about Phoenix Wellness Center? Yes, so I'm gonna give you guys my office number, which is 541-272-5048. My email, which I'm not gonna lie, I'm not good at answering, but is n-r-a-r-i-d-e-n -R -R -E at phoenixwellnesscenter.org. Or the best way to reach me is my cell phone, which is 541-243-4895. Um, or just come into Phoenix. We're located in between JC Market and Salon Ethos on Highway 101. Now with Hayes Market. Cool. Oh, man, you got me. It's okay. That's a tough one. It's been, it's it been just JC happened. for years. Yeah, I know. Eight days ago. <laughs> um, but we're at 145 North Coast Highway Suite B. So please don't hesitate to call. Come in. If you're struggling, you know somebody that's struggling, please call me. I would be happy to reach out to them or that was one Just thing that we, we really didn't mention is that you also provide support for family members. Absolutely. If their family member isn't quite ready to make that change yet, you help with family members and getting them the resources that they may need. Yes, absolutely. You know, that it's like you said before, Phoenix is kind of a family oriented business. We, we take pride in making sure that every aspect of that addict's life is taken care of. If that means providing support to their children or their mom or their dad sometimes it's a simple phone call and sometimes it's a lot of phone calls but in the end it teaches everybody uh how to provide support to that individual and and really addiction isn't just about an individual it's about the whole family all right thank you so much nicole uh, remember to like subscribe and ring the bell so you can get notifications uh, we really appreciate it and thank you so much for watching and listening to coffee with kira I'm Kara Morgan. Thank you, Nicole. We are sponsored by The Human Being in Newport at 6th Street and Highway 101 in Lincoln City at the north end of the highway on the west side next to TLC Credit Union. For Oregon Coast Breaking News, I'm Kara Morgan.